Hello and welcome, my name is Fake Fairy Tale, and welcome to the seventh video in this Let's Build a House series. So today I would like to get started on adding a few footsteps and trails within the house uh, to indicate that people are moving around and not wiping their shoes before they come in. Uh, it makes it look all very lively. And afterwards I will continue on with the outside of the building. So let's dive right in. In the previous videos we used blood and the alpha values to get uh, the stains on the floor in. And I would like to use the same thing today, but today we'll use it for footsteps. Now we start with some brown color and we will turn the alpha value all the way down. Perhaps make it even a bit darker. And let's see how this looks. I think we can even go down a bit further. Yes, that's good. And we're going to add in the foot trailing from one place to another. Um, and I think we are not going to do it all the way uh, because the footsteps and the dirt will, will, they will leave dirt with every step and eventually you'll run out. And let's see, we have a few very great assets for that. These ones, for example, that you see, they fade progressively the further they go out. And that's what we want to use. I'm going to just put some over here as well. And I want to do the same thing in the kitchen, but then from the kitchen outwards. So we can place a few over here. Because in the kitchen it usually is quite dirty, especially around the stove. And I still want to add some stains in there as well. And that dirt is something you'll walk into your house as well. I'm presuming uh, that you don't have any modern cleaning materials. It's very hard to get the stains out of a wooden floor. So we will add in some larger stains on the floor as well. Let's see. Yeah, this works fine. And now we're going to turn it to black. Um, somewhere over there make it a very opaque a very see-through and we'll put it on layer one all the way at the bottom around the stove over here and i think i want to have like a bottle that broke over here somewhere so we'll take the red color and make it a bit dark red move it all the way down and make it a bit smaller I'll put the stains in over here, underneath, there we go. And now we have some additional textures on the floor and that will just make it all look a bit more interesting again. Okay, having done that, uh, we're going to the lighting, as I forgot to mention. Um, Lighting can be very iffy in Dungeon Draft. It's not very easy to use um, because uh, usually you have to place down a light before you're able to rotate it. Uh, it can become very tedious and annoying. Um, and that's why I am going to show you the easiest and the most simple tricks that you can apply. Uh, but I won't go into extreme detail on where to put what light exactly uh, and do it with the entire house because i think that's going to take way too much time and is simply not that interesting to look at i might work on it a little bit in between videos uh, but i'll show you the gist of it here and then you can try and play around with it yourself so the idea of highlighting is that you place these strips and bars on edges uh, or window sills or places that uh, a lot of light hits and it reflects off of it and that's kind of what you want to uh, what you want to achieve so a few places that i see right here that might be interesting for a uh, highlight is the chair up here the side of the table over here um, you have some curved ones as well so we can have a look if we manage uh, to put one on the back side of this chair and um, also in here, maybe along the edge of this shelf that's a bit higher up, and maybe along the edge of the stove. Um, the idea is, well, you have a few things that you can, can change about the light. You have the range, 
and as the range grows bigger you see that it uh, it becomes bigger itself um, but it's very uh, bright and very intense still and there's not a lot of objects that are this big and um, will require such a highlight so what you can do is you can turn down the intensity to make it fade out a little bit or you can turn it up if you like if something is really extremely bright um, but I actually never ever use this so usually I keep it on one or lower and the range is about one as well because that's the intentional size oh, let me see there we go oh well so the first one I'll be putting over here and let's see if I think I'm going to turn down the intensity somewhat, put it on 8. We want something over there. Uh, we want something over here. Um, let's see along the edge here as well. There and this, for example, is a place where you can already just put it down outright for here. Let's turn up the intensity a little bit to make it a bit more clear that the highlight is over here. And I want, yeah, I think this is fine. We'll just put it on that edge over there. And for this one, it's the light that comes in from the window. You see that this area is a bit dark still, so I want to lighten that up a little bit. We'll make it very small. We'll make the light very white and make sure that this is a bit brighter uh, so that the the uh, the highlight made some actual sense uh, to be there because if this place up front on the tiles is very dark uh, it doesn't make sense that a lot of light hits uh, the stove so now we're going to grab the move tool and we'll select this one over here and we're going to turn it sideways and we have to make it a bit smaller and we'll play around with it a little bit and position it somewhere don't be like unfortunately you can't hide lights under walls or layers it's always above everything that's one of the very uh, one of the big disadvantages uh, of dungeon draft and that's also why uh, highlighting becomes a pain a bit because for for example right here you see that the highlight crosses over uh, the pan and uh, you have a, a bit of a lighter area over here uh, while it actually should be a bit further up if you want to hi uh, highlight that as well um, what we can do about it is maybe turn it a little bit that's fine and now yeah that's much better uh, and you'll have to play around with those kinds of tricks and, and positioning to make sure that it looks good um, so we'll continue to the other side we'll take another highlight over here turn it sideways I'll put lace it on the edge here and I already noticed I think I made it a bit too vague and not um, I want uh, I wanted to have some sharper edges so we'll go to the light tool again we'll select a new one and I think this is better because now the intensity is on one and it's a bit brighter so we'll turn it sideways once more and we're going to have to make it a bit smaller. Uh, there we go and make it smaller. Place it a bit further down there. There we go. And now, as you can see, you see that the highlight hits the table here. It, it, it makes the whole thing look very, um, very alive. And I like that a lot. And if what you want to do, um, if you want to go one step further, you can turn down the intensity to like 0 0.5. Place down another one. And I'll place this one adjacent to the actual highlight, so right next to it. So the edges are a bit less sharp um, and it fades into the natural color of the table itself. Uh, and that's just really cool. I think that we can try to put on a highlight there as well and see if we can make it small enough for it to make sense. We'll put it again on one. There we go. And I will have to make it very small. And you won't see it very well. So we'll actually turn up the brightness a bit. And 
that's that's okay i think i like it like that we're gonna leave it that way um so you have these round ones here as well or half circles quarter circles i'm not entirely sure um you can use these you have these little pins uh, these work well on bottles and potions. So, for example, we want a bit of a bigger one. These has very sharp edges. That's something I don't like. Um, and I want uh, something that can be made a bit smaller. This is for gems, for example. Uh, can be very useful. Um, mm -hmm. I think these could work if we make them even smaller. Uh, but that's also a bit of an issue because right now you can't really make it smaller. And oh, maybe if we do it like this. There we go. Um, it's always a hassle to find uh, the edges here. No, unfortunately. So there you see those those things with lights are just kind of um, annoying uh, and it's very hard to get it all right. But oh well, you get the gist of it. We will be adding a little high, a bit of highlight over at the shelf as well. And we can make this one somewhat larger, put it back on one. The range can go up. This seems right size turn it sideways position it over here though i do think the brightness is a bit too high as you see that the the, the books themselves are quite dark already uh, i do want to put some highlight in there but let's make it very subtle and not too bright so we'll take a much lighter one there we go much softer one <laughs> All right, and that's basically what highlight highlighting is all about. You can go from from all uh, different kinds of places and angles, and just make sure that it makes sense um, when you compare it to light sources that are close by. And and I'd say just go go try it out a little bit, play around with it a little bit, and you'll notice that at first it might be a bit hard but eventually you'll get the hang of it and after doing it a few times you already um, start to notice places where highlights might look good like here for example um, it's just placing them on the exact right spot can be hard especially with these kind of curved oh well that's fine it's not perfect as you see it now moves over to the other side of the chair but it's all right for now uh and i see i made a boo-boo here um let's fix that because that's way too big make them smaller scooch them over to the side so it hits the edge over there and basically with these ones Actually, what you should do, uh, because right now I'm using one highlight, um, but if you want to do this properly, I'll quickly show you what that looks like. You want to do it in three parts. Um, we make the center one small enough to fit in between uh, the outside blocks. We'll go to the light tool and we'll pick a very thin, small highlight. Um, though I want it to be a bit brighter, that's not what we want to do. No, 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 we'll put it on one highlight over there and see if we can position one adjacent to it and make the intensity a bit lower. And we just put down three or four of these. There we go. And we do another one over here on this side. One. Turn it down. Two. And can't see where it is. There we go. Four. Okay. 
So that's basically highlighting for you. I will leave it at this. Um, but you see specifically these areas, they look just pretty nice. Um, also here. Uh, and it gives a very natural look to the room, which means we're going to move to the outside of the building. And the first thing I would like to do is make sure that it stands out from the background uh, a bit more, because right now we only have shadows on the inside, not on the outside. And even though the textures are entirely different, um, we needed to cast some shadows. So let's first start with some shadow pots i would like to make them both transition in transition out fade and we will go along the edges of the house and i'm going to make them quite a bit smaller so let's go for 0 0.4 see how that looks i want them to be a bit darker as well yeah that's that's quite quite nice already and uh even a bit smaller 0 0.3 yeah, that's better. And I'm going to leave the windows shadowless or at least take a very light shadow. I think they will use the uh, 25 because there's light coming from the windows and um, I want to empathize that with, um, with the shadows and the lack of shadows being there. So we'll move around here and uh, let's see. And over here, over there. This is actually quite a bit too dark, maybe even 0 0.2. We'll also make it so that the light hits from this side of the building. So it comes from the top, which will be important when we put down the bushes around. And I'm actually not that satisfied with what we have. So I'm gonna redo this. Take a lighter shadow, have it disappear into the wall over here. And I want them to be a bit bigger on this side. So we'll put it on 0 0.4. And over here as well. And on the sides of the building, I would like them to be a bit smaller. So we'll go to 0 0.3. And do the same thing here as well. And on the other side, I'm gonna put them on 0 0.2. Because that's the side that the sunlight will be hitting. And the shadows have to be the thinnest. Now we're gonna leave it on 0 0.2 and I'm gonna trill along the edges once more especially the parts where there are no windows to get a bit more distinction between the floor and right here with these spots i'll stop at the window and we do it again over there and here as well and we do it on this side we'll put it even smaller like 0 0.1 just along the edges We'll take the chimney here as well. Move it all the way to the side. All right. So now we already pulled it away from the floor a bit. It's quite subtle and that's fine. We don't want it to be too obvious that uh, that's the thing we've done uh, because that just looks kind of weird. And um, another thing I would like to do uh, is add in a shadow of the building itself. And to do that, we will be using the shadow 20% floor pattern. And we'll use the little hard tool and we'll be clicking and making a shape. Oh, there we go. Messed up. Take number four. And what I want to do is I want to drill along the sides of the building and let's assume the light hits the building quite directly. Have them incline a little bit, just a little bit. But make sure that this side of the building is actually darker than the rest. And again, we have some hard transitions over here. I don't like that, some people do. So 
just do whatever you think is right and whatever you like. But a little trick I'd like to apply often is take a shadow path, a half shadow path and drag it along the edge of these um, of these shadow patterns that we put down so that the transition between the two is much softer but this is quite hard and tricky because you have to put it like at the exact pixel um, that the pattern is on because if you overlap you get a, like a very thin like you see here a very thin strip of darker shadow and if you miss it you see a very thin strip of light and what I often do here is I turn down my mouse sensitivity if that's an option for you I'd like to recommend doing that um, because it makes it much easier to easier to just move that one pixel um, and this is quite all right um, you can still see that there's like a very thin strip over here I'm gonna leave this for now uh, because I think you get the point uh, and I would like to keep on oh let's see okay I can't resist let's do it one single attempt we'll see yeah that's already a bit better okay we'll do it on the other side as well and this is something that you need a lot of patience for to get this done right but when you get it and it looks good I prefer it vastly over the I see that I have to do it down here as well I prefer it vastly the, over the sharp edge that the pattern has itself okay it ain't perfect you can potentially still see a line here and there but it's good enough for us fine okay so now we have a drop shadow from the building and we want to make the outside of the building look a bit more interesting because right now we only have grass which is fine and fun um, but there are a few things that I always apply I would like to have a tree here and there I would like to make a fence on this side I have a quite nice um, looking way of doing that and um, just make sure that there's something interesting to look at the outside we might even uh, make a little pond over here simply because I like it and it's very uh, it's cool to show you guys how how I go about it so we'll start with that then and we're going to need some water texture if you're unable to use more than four um, different kinds of textures I would like to recommend to remove the grass sparse in this case and just replace that with a water texture. The grass pass is fun and looks good um, but it's not a deal breaker if it's not in the map and I think the added value from a little pond is much higher than um, having another type of grass texture to um, break things up a bit. So we'll need some calm water uh, let's go for something really blue here and let's take the Let's open it up a little. There we go. And a good thing to keep in mind right now is that you don't um, have two sharp corners um, because we're going to trail it with a cliff path uh, to have the idea that it's sunken into the floor a little bit because this just looks kind of weird if this would be a pond you see the edges where the textures overflow into each other that's not very natural at all so what we want to do there is we're going to add take the path tool we're gonna take this grassy cliff thin Let's see turn off edit points yes that's what we want to do Put it on layer one, we'll zoom in and I will make them a bit larger because this is a bit too small. Shouldn't be too big and we'll just trail it along the edges. I see that I turned on the fade function. I don't want to do that. Um, and we'll just 
try to create a nice seamless transition when we meet the start of the path again. And let's see if we can make that work. Here we go. Um, I don't like that. That was a bit too straight. So we'll just play around with it a little bit. There we go. Move it. That actually ain't bad already. Okay, you see these little grass edges along the side. That's not the end of the world. We'll be adding another path over here. You can try to brush them away. Um, the problem with the brush is, and that's something you should keep in mind, is that um, it's slightly off center. So if you press it, you see that it originates a bit to the right, bottom right of my mouse. Um, I don't know exactly what this is. It seems to be a bug to me. Um, but you have to keep that in mind when I'm trying to fix these edges because if you're like, okay, that's it's gonna originate from the center, I think I shouldn't hit the grass here right now, but you see you actually do already, so we don't want that. So I always quickly, rapidly click and try to fix that, but making these ones go away, that, that's very hard. So I'm gonna leave them for now because we're going to place a little edge along the side and this is something the forgotten adventures asset packs have and it's really cool and really neat and it will look uh, make it look so much better this is not what i was looking for let me see there we have it and we're gonna trail it underneath the cliff side we don't want it to be on overlapping the little cliff and we'll use this along the edges of and it's okay to you know go underneath it a little bit um, especially if that prevents you from having to make a very sharp turn because you see that just like the shadows um, this pathway can overlap with itself and that looks very very bad so we don't want that and see if we can make a nice transition here there we go that's good. And now we have a little pond in here. Um, and we'll put some vegetation along the edges, maybe even in here. You have a little bit of artifacting here and there. We'll just hide that with some assets. And we will, uh, and it will look pretty anyway. Now, let's add in a few of the bigger ones. I see I already wildly went over time here. Uh, so the bigger ones, I mean the bigger assets, which are trees, and we'll be using a green, yellowish color. And forget to put back the alpha value. We'll put it on layer four, turn up my mouse sensitivity a bit, and I think we can actually make it even a bit more yellowish. Yeah, that's good. Um, also, a little nice trick that you might want to apply is saving up these hex codes that you have and put them in a Excel document and just collect all of them uh, so that if you make maps and you make multiple maps and you want to make sure that you have the same style and the same colors, you can just copy the hex codes from your document and uh, paste them in here. I actually have a few myself. I'll be sharing them uh, with you in the video, uh, in the video description, um, so that you can use them yourself as well. So I always like to put down a few trees on the edges of the map, just so that um, it hints to people looking at the map that there's something going on outside of the actual portrait that you see. Um, and that helps to make uh, make it fit in with the world view that they have or the, the image that they have for your area. They'll fill in that there are trees and other buildings around here um, and that just looks nice. Okay, this is where I would like to leave it for now. Um, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like, favorite or subscribe button. It helps me get my video out there. And I hope to see you again in the next video. We'll be making the fence. We'll put down some small shrubs and uh, make sure that the pond looks pretty. So thanks again for watching and hope to see you in the next video.